right, it's going to be an interesting day. I'm heading out today to do a quick interview. So why don't you guys come along with me? Thanks a lot, man. I am over here. Hello, sir. How are you? Finally here with the one and only Dr. Ricucci. Nice to meet you. You don't happen to have a bigger, like a booth or something like that, do you? Well, today I have the distinct pleasure and privilege of being joined by one of our contemporary great and Adonist scientists, Dr. Domenico Ricucci. Dr. Ricucci, thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. Now, you are in town to give a presentation to the Masters Association of Endodontists a little bit later tonight, and also to the three schools, the Harvard, BU, and uh, Tufts a little bit uh, tomorrow. But thank you for sitting with me and spending a little bit of time to share some of your views that I really admire and I look up to with our viewers. Let me ask you first question, I just have a few questions. One of them is, you know, endodontics has changed quite a bit over the past few decades. We started from a biological perspective, the Dr. Seltzer, Bender, and Langland, and many of the people we were just talking about. It's kind of moved towards a mechanical procedure now in terms of more driven from away from biology into x-rays and looks and so on. Where do you think endodontics went wrong? What happened? Well, this is a very good question and it is pretty difficult to answer your question. But I think that the responsibility number one is owned by the market because the market is making a pressure on the clinician, on the endodontist to buy devices, new materials, miracle devices sometimes. And not all the time these materials and devices are then proven to be uh, to be good according to the serious uh, research. So this is the, the first responsibility. Clinician more and more think that they want to, to reach technical excellence. When I say excellence, I mean for us endodontists, I mean showing uh, white lines, uh, puffs, uh, lateral canals, field in, in the radiographs and using and using social media but this is uh, this is not a proper way and uh, um, it is very sad for me to to see to realize today that in some parts of the world many young colleagues they use Facebook to learn instead of reading important publication this is this is a pity because it is a kind of imitation they want to do the same and what you see today in what I call the Facebook Facebook University <laughs> is a big problem today and I think that we should do something more in the future university lecturers single professional to try to change this trend which I which I find is a little bit dangerous yeah um, you know you you often see people asking questions online and it seems like they're missing some of the fundamental knowledge yes. that is necessary and that fundamental knowledge is not necessarily coming from watching a video it should be kind of going back to the science part of it and this uh, gives me the opportunity to tell you something for example one big problem today is not taking care of diagnosis but diagnosis is what counts in and I, I mean a case with a vital pulp preoperatively is totally different than one case with necrosis and a periapical lesion and everybody wants to initiate and to f complete the treatment in one visit, but this is wrong because in the second case you have infection and you have to know what is infection. You have to know the morphology of root canal infection. This is something very important and very few take care of this aspect. Yeah, I mean that is the essence of what we do is to manage infection. That's as we know from the Kakahashi and Stanley studies, that is the basis of everything that we do. And yet there is a rush for treatment, but I think part of the problem also in the fact that we have so much confusion is that we don't have adequate, really properly controlled studies that can show the difference between whether, as I would assume you're talking about two visits requiring calcium hydroxide therapy yes. or longer term calcium hydroxide therapy, as I know you're a big fan of, um, we don't have any of those specific prospective, you know, multi-center studies on necrotic teeth to see if it does make a difference, right? So that's part yeah, of the reason correct, that causes correct. the problem. You are absolute, absolutely right, because uh, it is extremely difficult to perform such a studies because you have to start with big numbers and follow up for a, a reasonable 
time, uh, meaning five, six, seven years, and then recall. Th this right. is becoming more and more a problem to recall the patient. Yeah. And when the recall rate is, is, I don't know, 20, 30 percent, it means nothing. So you need to have high percentage of recall, which is becoming difficult. So you are right. We do not have enough studies, long-term follow-up studies, demonstrating the difference between the treatment. You are right. And that actually, unfortunately, leads into the opportunity for people to create you know, opinions and then the companies come in and they try to maximize that and so they take advantage of that uh, lack of that vacuum of knowledge. You know, I had this uh, recent discussion on the AAE connection where my argument was that the American Association of Endodontists has an endowment money and that endowment money, instead of being kind of just given to whoever wants to do a weekend study, should be really dedicated into creating a high quality prospective clinical study that creates the required evidence for us to be able to make any of these arguments valid in terms of what each one of these small pieces mean. You know, I mean, physicians have these, the nurses studies, the Framingham studies, things like that that are high volume numbers that are clinical and they kind of make sense. But unfortunately, we always are resorted to these weekend studies that are bench top and really we have to work on proxy. So speaking of that, your work in terms of histology is incredible. I mean, you, you have these beautiful slides that are prepared and you, you obviously do a, put a lot of effort and uh, passion into it. But what, just to give it a little bit of background over yourself, how did you go from endo and dentistry into this field of histology? Well, this is a long story. When I, uh, in my time, you could not be a dentist. You had to be a medical doctor before being a dentist. So I am a medical doctor, and then dentistry was just a specialty of medicine at that time. So I had to go at, uh, That actually makes a lot of sense, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yes, 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 but it is too long. I admit it is too long because it was six years medi medicine and then three more years for dentistry. But anyway, it gave me, gave me the basis for the biology. And and when I started to be a dentist and I started to, to love endodontics, then I, I was wondering why this is the response to what uh, I am doing, to what I did to this patient, why there is pain, why not, and so on. And nobody, I was asking to all the colleagues and very seldom I received correct answer. And then the first one who started to answer to me in a precise way was Professor Langen. When I met him, he was my mentor, he became my mentor. And then I started to be passionate in histology because histomorphology is a, is a precise discipline that can give you the morphology of the pathology and it is easily understandable also by people who are not versed with histology. When you show properly some histology, it is not boring. It is the morphology of the pathology. It's the cellular so, basis of disease. Yes, yeah, so I started to love it. But unfortunately, Langland at that time re retired when I met him. Then he was following me with my idea to establish a histologic laboratory. In my practice, it became my hobby where I spend my free time. So I spend my free time in my lab. This is very interesting because I can process specimens originating, obviously only human specimens, originating from the clinic. When you do, for example, epical surgery for a failure of an endodontic treatment, then nothing is, is better to investigate properly what is the reason, most of the time infection, and when, when, uh, where are bacteria in the epical canal system. This is what tells you if something is or is not. So this is the reason why I love histology, because you can express no more opinion, but you have fact. Right, you can back it up with actual uh, visuals instead of just you know concepts and proxies. So this is wonderful. Let's take a quick break and break this up to a couple of different pieces. So uh, we'll come back for the next uh, video right after this.